you have your Bibles, turn with me to Deuteronomy chapter 4. Deuteronomy 4. Today I'd like to talk to you about in God we trust. It is with no apologies that I preach in God we trust. It is God who created us. It is God who sustains us. It is God who provides for us. And it will be God sending His Son Jesus to come back for His church. If you have a bulletin and want to follow along today, in God we trust. Number one, trust in His Word. Notice the word, word is capitalized. John chapter 1 said, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word with, was with God, and the Word was God. God always was. Jesus always was. And it is His precious Word that we stake our beliefs and we stake our doctrine on. It doesn't matter what the world says. It doesn't matter what they, their opinions. What matters is what God says. Second one, trust in His protection. Oh, folks, don't get shaken. Don't get worried. God is in control. God is all-powerful. God is almighty. God and Jesus are King of kings and Lord of lords. Number three, trust in His wisdom. Folks, we need His wisdom. We need it in our personal lives. We need it in our church. We need it in... Uh, schools. We need it uh, just everywhere. In Congress, we need it. God's wisdom, and we praise God that He has sent us the Word of God. You know, I believe that we are losing true patriotism in the United States of America. A patriot is a person who support and is de- supports and is devoted to the country in which they live. It breaks my heart to see America divided by people disrespecting our flag, pushing non-biblical beliefs uh, that are taught, that are destroying the morals and the character of our nation, and a divided Congress full of hate and a lack of respect for God and His Word. Let let me remind you of these facts. Our founding fathers did did not believe in the separation of God from government. They believed that this nation was founded by God protected by God, preserved by God, and blessed by God. Everything depends on God. And based on that belief, they were willing to pledge their lives, their fortunes, their sacred honor. And they put it all on the line. Of those 56 men who signed the Declaration of Independence, 52 were born again Christians. Nine died of wounds or hardships during the war. Five were captured and imprisoned. And in each case, uh, in, in each case, subject to torture, several lost wives, children, or entire families. One lost his 13 children. Two wives were brutalized by the British. All were at one time or another victims of manhunts and driven from their homes. Twelve signers had their homes completely burned to the ground. Seventeen lost everything they owned. Indeed, these men not only pledged their pledged, but gave their lives and their fortunes, and not one went back on his sacred honor. The nation they sacrificed so much uh, to help, help found, is still intact for us to enjoy today. We, as a Christian family, need to understand God blesses America, and we are going to trust in God. It is still, I know there's problems in our nation, but it is still the greatest nation to live in. We made two huge mistakes as far as I can see in history, and we've made more than that. But when we took prayer out of schools, that was a thing that that really hurt the spirituality of our country. I remember in second grade, my second grade teacher, we would pledge to the flag every day, And then we would read a Bible verse, and she would pray a prayer in Cleveland Elementary School in Lawton, Oklahoma. And the second thing is Roe versus Wade. Folks, it is murder. 
It is the taking of life. Life begins at conception. And I thank God we are turning that back. And we are giving babies and couples a new chance at life. So today I want you to see, number one, trust in His Word. Deuteronomy 4, verse 1, Now, O Israel, listen to the statutes and the judgments which each of you uh, to for each of you to observe. When it says listen, the verb to hear or listen is used 100 times in the book of Deuteronomy. So God is saying right here, and we know Moses is uh, addressing Israel, and Moses is, is telling them obedience to the Word of God, obedience to God is extremely important. That's what his judgments are. It is his divine word. It is the Holy Bible. It is God's love letter to us. It is Old and New Testament. It is the infallible, inspired, perfect word of God. That you may live and go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers is given you. Folks, every good and perfect gift given to us comes down from our Heavenly Father. You are breathing today because of our Heavenly Father. You have freedom today because of our Heavenly Father. We can worship today because of our Heavenly Father. You shall not add the word which I command you, nor take from it, that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God in which I command you. Folks, I hold in my hand the Holy Word of God. And we need to support it. We need to believe it. We need to trust in His Word. It is divine instructions to His church. It is divine instructions to His family and to His children. So we need to embrace God's Holy Word. Romans 10, 17. Romans 10, 17 says this, Romans 10, 17, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Folks, I am telling you, put in every man is faith. I did not say a saving faith because man has to make that choice. But there is faith in, in every person. And the way we find faith in God is through His Word. His Word is the most important book we'll ever read. His Word is life and death. His Word is yes and amen. And I'm telling you, we practice our faith in the Word of God. Hebrews 4.12. Look at Hebrews 4.12. Hebrews 4, 12 tells us, for the Word of God, this Bible is living. You say, ah, it's just a book. No, it's more than a book. It's living words. It's life. It is eternal life. It is Jesus Christ. It is God's words to us. It is living. It is powerful. It will change your life. It'll make a drunk man saved. It'll save anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. And folks, it cuts both sides. It pierces our heart. It convicts us of sin. Piercing even to the division of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow and is discerners of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Oh, folks, we've got to fall in love with the Word of God. We have to make the Word of God a part of our lives. We have to stake our lives on the Word of God. We have to protect it. Protect it. Deuteronomy 6. Deuteronomy 6. Look at Deuteronomy 6, verse 1. This is the greatest commandment. Now, this is the commandment. These are the statutes and judgments which the Lord your God has commanded you to teach, that you may observe them in the land which you are crossing over to possess, 
that you may fear the Lord your God and keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I command you. And you and your son and your grandson all the days of your life, that your days may be prolonged. Therefore hear, O Israel, and be careful to observe it, that it may be well with you, and that you may multiply greatly as the Lord God your fathers has promised you, a land flowing with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And we believe in the Trinity, God the Father who created everything, God the Son who gave his life for us, and God the Holy Spirit that comes into us at the point of salvation. And you shall love the Lord God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Folks, that's every bit of you. And you should love not only the Lord your God, not only Jesus Christ, but you need to love the Word of God with all your heart, all your soul, and with all your strength. And these are the words which I commanded you today. And they shall be in your heart. That's memorizing it. You shall teach them diligently to your children and to talk to them when you sit down in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. You walked into my entryway to my house. The first thing you will see when you walk in is a a sign there that says, As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Well, folks, I'm all for school teachers, I'm all for learning. But when it comes to the Word of God, I am telling you, parents, you are responsible to teach your children. You shall bind them as a sign into your hand, and they shall be frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates. We won't turn to Revelation 22, but it simply says we do not need to add or try to change the Word of God. And I'm telling you, anyone that does that is not a child of God according to Scripture. Folks, we need to protect the Word of God. We need to believe the Word of God. We need to obey the Word of God. In God we trust. The second thing I want you to see in Scripture back in Deuteronomy 4, trust in His protection. Trust in His protection. Look at verse 3. Your eyes have seen what the Lord did at Bel Peor. For the Lord your God has destroyed from among you all men who followed uh, Baal of Peor. But you who held fast to the Lord your God are alive today, every one of you. Moses had reminded them of something that just happened years earlier. And the story, and I covered this a couple of weeks ago on a Wednesday night of Balaam, uh, who, who was a basically false prophet and the King Balak of the Moabites. And they had heard what Israel had done and the conquering that went done. So King Balak hired Balaam to curse Israel. But every time he started to do that, uh, God would not let him and God blessed Israel. And so they realized three times that wasn't going to happen. So Baal and Balak encouraged some of the people of Israel to go and intermingle with the Moabites. And they, uh, uh, they participated in ungodly things. They were given uh, temple prostitutes, and they were prostituting their bodies, and they were worshiping idols. And on that day, read the Scripture. Read the Scripture. It says, Uh, of the Israelites, 24,000 died that day because God judged them for what they were doing. Folks, men are attracted to idols. Men are attracted to money and fame and all these things. And folks, I am telling you, you can't buy your way into heaven. Salvation is free, but it costs God, His only begotten Son. It cost Jesus His life. And we need to understand the most precious gift we have is salvation and the Word of God. And God protected those who refused to bow down to Satan. 
Folks, I am telling you, God is looking over us today. There are people that are almost, I, I hear the word, I'm afraid of World War II. I'm afraid of the nuclear power. I'm afraid. 365 times in the Word of God, it says, do not be afraid. I refuse to live in fear, folks. God's going to take care of us. And even if it happens, even if somebody pushes the button, you know what he just did? He will send us out into eternity, and we will see God sooner. There is no fear in loving and serving God. Psalm 91. I love this psalm. Psalm 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide unto the shadow of the Almighty. Folks, we can get in His arms, but all we have to do is be in His shadow. Just follow Him. Just follow Him. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him I will trust. Oh, folks, you started your spiritual journey with trusting God. Don't quit now. Keep trusting. Keep believing. Keep knowing God's in control. Keep knowing that His timing is perfect. Believe God can. That's what faith is. Believing that God can do anything. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowlers and of the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night or the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness nor the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. I will never forget sitting under the preaching of J. Harold Smith. And he told the story of a man that was at a tent revival. And after church, this man had a gun in his hand, and he walked up and pointed the gun in J. Harold Smith's face. And Jay Harold just did not fear. The guy pulled the trigger, and it did not fire. Oh, folks, we're under the divine protection of God. You're not going to die a day earlier or a day late than what God says. We need to live as every day is our last day on earth. We need to live because there is a, a lost and dying world out there. We need to share the gospel with everyone. And I tell you, the only thing that's going to solve America's problems is Jesus Christ and salvation. But you shall not come near to you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. His protection. Look at Joshua. Look at Joshua 1. Moses had died. And Joshua had the duty of taking the children of Israel into the promised land. And look at verse 6. Be strong and of good courage. For to this people you shall divide as an inheritance of the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous. Do you remember the 12 spies went there and 10 of them come back and said, man, we can't do this. They've got fortified walls. We can't do that. They have armies. They have giants. They have all these things. But Joshua and Caleb said, let's go. Let's go. We can do it. God says he has already conquered Canaan. But they took a vote. And by the way, the majority is not always right. If the majority is not following God, they will lead you down the wrong road. And they walked away from Canaan and spent 40 years wandering in the wilderness 
because of their decision. So be strong and courageous that you may observe to do all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. The book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate it in it day and night, that you may observe and do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and you will have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Three times he tells us as Christians to be strong and have good courage. Do not be afraid nor dismayed. Look at this. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Now, oh, folks, I hope you understand. There is never a time that God is not with you. There's never a time. God is with you. God is in you. God is for you. We should not fear. And by the way, we as Americans and as Christians need to stand with Israel. We need to stand with them. They are still God's chosen people. And I'm telling you, as we study the book of Revelation, I'm telling you, God has a special plan for Israel. So we see, we trust in His Word. We trust in His protection. And number three, we trust in His wisdom. His wisdom. Look at Deuteronomy 4 back in our text. Deuteronomy 4, verse 5. Surely I've taught you the statutes of judgment, just as the Lord my God commanded me, that you should act according to them in the land in which you go to possess. Therefore be careful to observe them, for this is your wisdom and understanding in the sight of the peoples who will hear all these statutes and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. Oh, folks, we need wisdom in our lives. And the way you get wisdom is to know the Word of God and to have intimate fellowship with God. We need to know how God thinks. We need to know what God would do. We need to know how God would judge. We need to know what God would say. That's what wisdom is, all right? There's a difference between knowledge. And folks, I'm all, all for knowledge. If you've earned your doctorate, I, I respect that. I really do. If you've earned a, earned a PhD, I applaud you. But I'm telling you, you are not smart if you do that apart from God. I'm telling you, the greatest decision any person can make in life is to know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior and Lord. And here he is saying, God is the one that gives us wisdom. And that's the problem why our country is making so many bad decisions, because they are not believers. They are not believers. They don't believe in the Word of God. And folks, we must continue to stand for the Word of God. Now look at this. For what great nation is there that God is so near to it as the Lord our God is to us? For whatever reason, we may call upon Him. And what great nation is there that has such statues and righteous judgments as are in, this law, all, in all this law which I set before you? Only take heed to yourself and diligently keep yourself lest you forget the things your eyes have seen and lest you depart from your heart all the days of your lives. What did the children of Israel see? Folks, they saw the parting of the Red Sea. They saw the parting of the Jordan River. They saw manna drop down from heaven. They saw quail drop down from heaven. And still with God doing all these things, people still doubted God. And folks, I'm telling you, God provides. God is in control. And we need to give our country uh, uh, back to God. And we need to realize that God is the most important ingredient in 
lies. And look what it says. And to teach them to your children and to your grandchildren, especially concerning the day you stood still before in, uh, you, be, the Lord your God in Horeb, when the Lord said, Gather me people to me, and I will be near to them, that they may learn to fear me all the days uh, they live on the earth, and that they may teach their children. And again, he's talking about Moses when he went up Mount Horeb and the Ten Commandments were given. And and literally they could hear, they could not see God, but they could hear the voice of God. Folks, I've never seen God. I've never seen Jesus. But I'm telling you, I know they're real. I know God is looking down in heaven over us. I know Jesus right now is at the right hand of God. And I know one, in, one invitation sometime here or on earth or somewhere, somebody's going to walk down an aisle and they're going to give their heart and their life in Christ and God's going to look over and say, go get my bride. Go get my bride. Folks, that'll be the happiest day of your life or the saddest day of your life. Then the Bible says also, uh, Proverbs 9, Proverbs 9, if you go with me, trust in His wisdom, Proverbs 9. Just a few scriptures left. Proverbs 9, fear the Lord, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. For by me your days will be multiplied, and the years of your life will be added unto you. He said it more than one time in his word. Fear God. Respect God. Find wisdom. He will multiply your days. In Psalm 33, Psalm 33, I love this one. Psalms 33, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Folks, we are blessed because of our nation. There are God-fearing Christians in this nation. The people has chosen as his own inheritance. Then one of my favorite scriptures in all the Word of God, and you know it by heart, Proverbs 3, verse 5, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not into your, your own understanding. Folks, there's a lot of things that I don't understand. There's just a lot of things in life that seems unfair. There's going to be trials. There's going to be heartaches. There are going to be times when you just don't, some, you, you know, you just can't see the hand of God in what is going on. And folks, we have to trust His heart. We have to trust Him in everything that we do. Verse 6, and in all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your paths. Folks, the Word of God is true. It is yes, and is, is amen. And I thank God that we are celebrating the 4th of July today and again on Tuesday. And I am so happy for the freedoms that we have here in America. But in closing, I want to tell you the most important freedom there is, and that is spiritual freedom. Spiritual freedom. You realize that if you're saved, you are free from worry? Now, I don't say you don't worry, because a lot of you do. You do. And by the way, if I worried a lot, I wouldn't brag on it if I were you, okay? I, I just wouldn't do that. Worry, I'm telling you. It's like a rocking chair on a porch. You're making a lot of movement, but you are going nowhere. Worry changes nothing. What have I got to be worried about? Man, I'm saved. I'm going to heaven. And it doesn't matter how. Folks, we're all going to die. Okay? You live long enough, you're going to die. So why, would be, why do we need to worry? We have freedom from worry, freedom from sin, not right now, but man, when we get to heaven, we're talking about that. We're talking about that. We'll talk about it again next week as we study Revelation. Worry from fear. 
No fears. And here's the best one. No worries about death. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Man, don't you threaten me with death. I'd have to laugh. I would just have to laugh because you are doing me a favor. And I don't have a death wish, and I want to, I love my family. I want to see my grandkids grow up and all that. I understand all that. But I'll, I'll be switched if I'm going to worry about death. And the third thing, or, or the last thing, is you have freedom that you'll never have anywhere else, and that is heaven itself. Heaven. And folks, if you do not have spiritual freedom today, you are in bondage. You are in bondage to worry. You are in bondage to sin. You are in bondage to fear. You are in bondage to death. And folks, there's only two places according to the Word of God. If you don't go to heaven, the Bible says hell is real if you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. My suggestion, if you do not have spiritual freedom, that you would give your heart and your life to Jesus Christ. And I am telling you, Jesus will set you free. Father, thank you for this day. And God, I thank you for our country. I thank you how you've blessed it. And I know there's so much wrong. God, they're just wearing us out with sin. And they really are. They are justifying their lifestyles. And God, I pray that we would stand for you and stand for the church and stand for the Word of God. I pray that your Word would just permeate our hearts and our beings. And God, we're going to trust you. doesn't matter what everybody else is doing. We're going to trust you. So God, I thank you for your Word. I thank you for your protection. And God, I thank you for your wisdom. Lord, we give this time of invitation to you. God, I pray with you would do with it what you choose. And God, I pray if there's one here that doesn't know you, God, I pray they wouldn't wait for a last verse. I pray as soon as we stand, as soon as we start singing, that they would give their heart and life to Jesus, that they would walk down the aisle and make a profession of faith. God, it's the greatest trust and it's the greatest feeling in the world. God, I pray for Christians. Maybe somebody needs to rededicate their life or come for baptism. Oh, Lord, maybe join the church. Maybe they've been coming and, oh, Lord, they want to join the church. Lord, I, I pray that you just give them the freedom to do that. God, this is your church. This is your time. This is your invitation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Would you stand to your feet? If God has spoken to you in any way, would you come?